my name is Ashley and welcome to my watercolor YouTube channel. I'm a self-taught artist and I would love to help you learn all the tips and tricks that I have gained over the years through experience. So I hope that you enjoy these videos. I hope that they're helpful to you. If they are, please like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you for stopping by. Hi everyone. Um, so I live in Arizona where it is currently 115 degrees. Um, and I really like to paint landscapes especially of mountains and pretty mountainy places that I've been. So I thought that since I can't go outside, can't really go hiking, um, I would do a landscape painting. This is my reference photo. This um, is actually from my husband and my honeymoon in Argentina this January. Um, so we were driving through the Andes Mountains to go to a bunch of different little artsy towns, go to art festivals and such. Um, and so this was a photo that I took from the car, I was not driving, do not worry, he was driving. Um, but this is the photo that I'm gonna use for reference and I'll show you kind of how um, I make this into a watercolor. So I'm not gonna do it like super, super detailed, I'll make it simple, but I've chosen this photo for a couple reasons, I'll explain that to you um, once we get started. First and foremost, um, I've cut my paper to an eight by 10 size and I'm going to use washi tape, which is a Japanese paper tape to make sure that this is fixed onto my whoopsie, onto my desk um, so it does not move around because um, I want it to stay flat and I also want there to be a little bit of a border around it to keep the water under control. Um, so I'm just gonna start by taping off the edges. You can use any thickness of washi tape, doesn't really matter um, however thick you want it to be. And I like to buy the super cheap clearance ugly washi tape that I would never ever ever use <laughs> because it doesn't matter, it's not actually staying anywhere. You'll just peel this off at the very end, I'll show you. Um, but no matter what it looks like, it does the job of keeping your paper flat and somewhat under control. So that is step number one, the corners of washi tape. Um, I have my watercolor pencil here, so I'm going to use this to just sketch out a basic idea of what I'm painting here. You'll see that the size of the photo and the size of the paper are not quite proportional, not exactly the same, so it's not going to be 100% to scale, but I'm A-OK -okay with that. Um, so I'm going to start with the biggest lines, so I'm kind of seeing that like right about here, the mountain starts. There's kind of some dips in there, over there. Again, not gonna make it 100% perfect, but that's okay. There's a little bit of a patch of some trees there that I just wanna make sure that I remember. Some darker glacier spots kind of running down there. Um, There's this uh, formation in the middle here. Okay, and then there's a little bit that kind of comes down this ridge line there. This is just to give me an idea of where to put the dark shadows and the lighter spots and such. So then this all down here is pretty much green um, and then there's kind of a green belt going across there. Some trees in there and going up there. That's all trees in there. Okay and then let's see here. The trees kind of come all the way down to about here. Okay, and I'm going to start the road. And a little side 
big marks there. And then this curve here, so I'm just going to remind myself that there's kind of some shrubbery going on over there. Some little grassy patches. This part is mostly dirt over here. And I'm going to pay attention to these shadows once I start painting. Over here we have a big tree there, a couple of trees there, a little one there. Okay, I'm actually not going to put the cars in. I just want it to be natural. And I'm going to um, take this tree out here and I'm just going to sketch an area for this tree here. Okay, so that just gives me my general area, is my general scale. Um, I'm going to be too precise there. Okay, so I have, like usual, my size six round brush, my Prima Marketing watercolors. Um, I'm using the Woodlands palette uh, and the Currents palette. Okay, I readjusted my camera and turned the light off, so hopefully you can see the sketch a little bit better. Um, but in case you can't, here's a close-up. So, with watercolor, um, you want to start with the lightest shades. Um, and sometimes it can be helpful, especially when you're starting out, to actually consciously note what where that is. <laughs> So for example, this would be a light spot in here. We've got the light, the snow in there. Of course the sky, but that's kind of separate. We don't have to touch that at all. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna pay attention to these shadows here. This is all kind of the same medium tone and then there's some shadows. Um, but I'm gonna start up at the top in the mountain. Um, Okay, so I've, I've done these contour lines to show myself kind of where to put the shadows and where to put the light spots. So I'm going to start with just a little bit of really light gray that I'm going to water down. Um, okay, And even though it's really light in the snowy area, there's still quite a bit of texture. So what I'm going to do is go over a big chunk of this mountain area here. With that really watered down gray, probably barely even looks like color at all. Um, okay. And I'm going to start to work in, um, well that's drying a little bit, I'm going to start to work in some of these other darker shades in here. So I'm going to get these to match up and diffuse into each other a little bit. And I can always make these darker later, but I want them to bleed a bit to get there, that light gray with the all the water and these dark, dark blues over here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of water on my brush and just kind of get those to blend a little bit more there. Bring that over. Just going to let those bleed a little bit.
Okay, that's working on that. And this is still a little bit damp in here, so I'm just gonna put some of these darker shadowy areas in here, but it's still damp, so it's gonna diffuse them a little bit and they won't be such harsh areas. this patch over here. And see how that's kind of blending in there with the gray. That's what I was going for there. Okay, and then I'm going to take this blue, I'm going to water it down quite a bit, and I'm going to start to do some of these mid-tones over here, get those to blend a little bit into each other, create some shadows. amazing how much texture there is in snow. And there's some spots in here that are a little bit uh, darker. So I'm just going to go back through and add a little bit of pigment in there. You can see that the sun is kind of coming this way because all the shadows are down and mostly to the left, so the lighter areas, I mean, yeah, so the lighter areas are kind of getting hit and the shadows are going this direction. So that's what I'm paying attention to here. So I'm just kind of looking back and forth, trying to see what areas I'm missing, but trying to not cover the whole thing in too much color. I want it to stay really light because it is snow. Another thing is that even though all of this area, it's mostly trees and it's probably technically like a really dark green, um, I've decided to make it <laughs> uh, more like a dark blue <laughs> just because I like how that looks better and uh, there's so much green in the painting that I think it's really nice to have um, a little bit of different tones going on. That being said, coming up on an area here where it starts to look really, really green. So I'll show you what we'll do with that. So that's the dark part, the shadowy part, and then I'm going to take 
this green. Actually, I don't like that green. I'm going to do this green over here. And kind of like I did with the gray and the blue, we're going to diffuse that in a little bit. Start to introduce that into the mix there. And those will just start bleeding together, making a dark blue-green. And a similar thing on this side, it becomes really green in here. So I'm going to get some of this green here. Start to diffuse that in with the blue. Notice how I'm just slowly moving down. I'm taking it one section at a time because um, it's really important to not lose control of the water. So if you're trying to diffuse something but your paper is completely dry, <laughs> you can't. Um, so like in these areas, in order to make the texture, I am going to go back in with a little bit of a different shade of green to show some texture in there, but I need my paper to be wet in order to do that. So I'm only doing one small section at a time so that I can control how that works out. Otherwise, I would just have completely dry trees, which could be fine if that's what you're going for. But in this case, I would like them to diffuse a little bit more. thing over here, making some tree lines in there. Okay. Cool. So that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna creep that up there a little bit, let that diffuse a little bit more. A little bit more texture on there. Alrighty, so we'll come back to that section once I can see a little bit better how it dries, but I'm going to move on down here. I'm going to introduce this little bit more yellowy green so that there's some differentiation between those two sections there. Okay. Cool. So... This is really similar. I'm just going to leave a little bit of room for the shrubs down there, and of course the road, trees on that side. Okay. So I'm going to go with a really similar green, obviously, since it's the same trees. And I'm just going to start making some. Lines in there. Okay. 
And notice how I'm using the very, very edge of my brush. So when I'm doing the little details, I'll show you later on with the trees, I'm going to use the end. But right now I'm just using the whole body of it because I want these to spread really well. Just trying to cover surface area here. And also stay within the lines. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's still wet, so I'm going to go over that again. Once it dries a little bit, I'm going to let it bleed a little bit more. I'll keep coming back to it. Keep reworking it until it looks how I like. I like I'm doing up here because when it dries, it usually dries a little bit lighter and it dries differently than you expect. So, you kind of have to keep going over it again until it looks how you want it to. I'm trying to avoid making like really straight lines just because the trees obviously are not straight lines. Um, okay. And there's a lot of different ways to do this texture. You could spend a lot more time uh, making sure that you're shadows in here are exactly lined up and you could do every single little treetop if you wanted to but um, this is more just uh, I'm trying to teach you kind of the overview so there is a little shadow in there there's some shadow in there I'm going to put a little bit of water in some different spots. We're just going to see what happens with that. I just want it to bleed a little bit more. I don't want it to be quite so harsh. Okie doke. So now we're going to come down to this side down on the right here. And we're going to start with the ground, which is mostly this beige. The curve there. But then it kind of diffuses into this yellowy green grass as well. So we're going to do some of that as well. And then out of that comes the bushes, which I need a different green for. I'm just kind of going, choosing as I go here. Okay. Oh, that's like a nice olivey green. Okay. So now the little bushes here. Just gonna let that diffuse in a little bit. Perfect. Okay. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of grass just because I wish there was something a little bit more vertical going on over here. There's not in the photo, but taking some artistic license here. Okay. And we'll go back over this again once it's dry. Make sure we have all of our little details. And then similar thing on this side. We'll start with the beige. Which 
which turns into this green here. And I notice how there's some nice bleeding going on in there. That's why it's important to control how wet the paper is because some of the funnest, funnest, I don't know if that's a word, uh, the best part of watercolor is that you can't always necessarily control that it looks exactly like that, but when you pay attention to your water and you go slowly and you do all that good stuff, then you can have a better chance of it actually looking like that. Thankfully this time it worked. It'd be a little awkward if it didn't. Um, okay, so now we've got a couple of big trees going on over here. On this side there are some bushes, so I guess I'll do do the bushes. The main thing that I sketched out was those trees. And notice I'm not doing every single tiny little detail. It would be really overwhelming if I was trying to um, put every single little thing in here. It would be really busy, really crazy looking. So just for reference for this tree here, this is a pretty fluffy looking tree, it's a pretty chubby one. Okay. And this puddle here is still pretty wet so that's why it's having a hard time. Um, going over that and you'll see that there's more shadows on this side so I'm going to diffuse a little bit of black into there show the shadows Same thing, shadows in there, and obviously these are just really abstract. <laughs> I'm not super concerned about them being perfect here. It's mostly just to have some depth. Oh yeah, so I was going to talk about why this is a good photo. So for me, this is a good photo to paint because number one, I remember being there and feeling what it felt like and that makes it a lot easier to get into the mode of um, what I want to convey through the painting. So I was on my honeymoon, we were on a long road trip. Uh, this is just one of the really pretty turns that we came upon and it's a really beautiful part of the world. But um, if you have a specific feeling or memory connected to your painting, it can make it a lot more compelling and uh, a lot more, yeah, feel like you're actually there. Um, so that's one thing. I try to paint places that I've actually been before. Uh, it's just a lot easier to get a grasp on it. And also, there's some different photography rules that kind of apply to why I was drawn to this picture, probably why my eye wanted to capture this photo because there's something called the rule of thirds um, which is that basically if you split the photo into thirds this way and this way um, the focus is in the bottom third which is actually uh, not typical usually it would be in the middle but um, the bottom third has one kind of scene going on the middle third has a different scene and the top third has a different scene and you have the same thing on the left, right, and middle. So it's very balanced. There's all of these nine quadrants, well, I guess not quadrant, there's nine, but nine sections that um, have different interesting things going on in them. And that makes it really visually compelling, but your eye focuses on the middle. There is a clear center point, which is also really good. Um, also, 
there's a foreground, a midground, and a background. So this is really important because, for example, if I were just painting um, just this tree, and there was nothing in the back, and there was nothing framing it, it, I mean, it could be an interesting tree, but it would be fairly boring. If it was just this mountain and there was nothing in front of it, you'd have to put a lot of detail to make it really feel interesting. Um, but because there's this layer in the back, there's this layer in the middle, there's this layer in the front here, which is what we're choosing to highlight when we paint all these different little things. So I'm not doing all the tiny little details in the middle here that I'm not wanting the eye to focus on that. Um, I actually want the eye to be focusing on this road and going up and feeling like this sense of height and scale. And that's another thing is that this road um, gives you perspective. It gets narrower, right? And it curves. Um, so there's just a lot of things going on that tell your eye where to look and tell your brush what to focus on painting. It's not so important that every single one of these little trees is perfectly represented. Um, it's more about do we have something in the back, something in the middle, and something in the front? And how is that balancing? And are we uh, adding the right amount of detail for each one? I'm not adding so much detail to the back that you focus on the back because I want the detail to be in the front. So otherwise it'll be confusing because it would look like you, your eye was, if you were seeing this in real life, you'd be focusing so much on the the mountain, but really what's close to you and what's in front of you and what your eye is putting the most emphasis on is actually what's in the front. So um, that's basically what, why I think that this uh, was a good photo to paint. Um, other than the fact that I just really like it. <laughs> but that could explain kind of why, um, why I was drawn to it in the first place. Okay, so you can see I've been adding some little accents here, and like I said, I'm just adding some more detail to the foreground here so that your eye um, feels like there's the right amount of specificity going on there. So, okay, I'm not entirely happy with these. I wish that they, I wish these bushes would have diffused with this a little bit more in here. Okay. I'm also feeling like I need to go back in here and add a little bit more texture in there. how that's bleeding in there. This is looking pretty good here. I might go back and do a little bit more with the mountains. Um, I'm just going to do some definition down here a little bit. And that'll hopefully spread up a little bit. Okay, so we have what's left is basically the sky, um, some sort of little tree going on there. I might actually do it on this side since this is pretty high up here. I'll actually probably do it over here. Um, and the road. So let's do the road. And like I said, we're going to pay attention to the shadows here. So I'm going to work with this gray again. That's not gray, that was green. Oops. Gray, let's try that again. Okay. And I'm gonna start out here. That edge kind of disappears. And there is a tiny little white line. Hopefully I can preserve this white line. <laughs> we shall see. Okay. And then there's a little yellow line in the middle there. Okay, so 
So I'm just going to fill that in. It's really hard to talk through a landscape. I didn't realize how challenging this would be. Okay, so that's the very lightest coat. Like I said, you always start with the lightest coat first. That's the super, super light coat. And then I'm going to add a little bit more pigment in there. And we're going to start looking at where the shadows are. And this helps the eye know where to look as well. And it helps it feel more realistic when you honor the optical illusions of shadows because otherwise it just looks really flat. My camera likes to do this thing where it cuts out at really bad moments. It's really annoying. So what I've done, while well, you couldn't see it, while well, it was not filming for whatever reason, was to put in my lines of my road. Um, and I'm just going back over my bushes here now. I don't like how these are turning out. I don't like how many layers I'm putting on them, but I'm gonna try to create a little bit more definition there. Okay. I don't know why it does that. All right. And then we're just going to do the sky here. So in order to do that, I'm going to do a really, really light wash of just water here. And then I'm going to put a little bit of blue. Notice it's not very dark. Um, so I just want it to be a nice light blue so that you know that it's the sky. That's the main thing. There are not, there's not a cloud in the sky this day, it's amazing. Okay, and I'm doing this last um, partially because I wanted this to completely dry so that this wouldn't bleed too much once I got it wet. And also because I wanted to see what shade of blue to use that would match the rest of the painting. So I'm pretty happy with that there. I'm just going to drag that over a little bit. And this is more loose, obviously. You can do whatever you want. If you want to put clouds in it, you could. If you want it darker, you could make it darker. Sometimes I like to put little splatters. Let's see how those diffuse. You never know. Whatever you're feeling like that day. Um, okay. Definitely need a little bit more. Division in there. Thing that's difficult about this painting that I'm realizing now is that there's so many shadows. There's so many dark spots. And this mountain is just a sea of green trees and there's a lot of ways you can represent that. But that's okay. Okay. That looks better. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Just going back through one more time, making sure that I like how all of that turned out. And then I'm going to add, once this is dry, I'm going to add this little tree over here.
I'm gonna do it in almost a black, like it's almost a, a shadow. Okay, cool. So that's that's pretty dry. Okay, so we've got this little branch coming down the middle. Got some little feathery. I don't know what kind of tree this is, but it's pretty. Just kind of following those main branch lines and stringing those out there. This is another thing that helps with the foreground because this is obviously close up. This is the first thing, uh, the first layer. And then this being the second, third, and fourth fifth so this actually does help to create some dimension as well this might be something that it would be good to use a smaller brush for but that's why I'm just using the very very edge of this one That's okay, that's still a little wet in there. It doesn't bother me. Okay. Any last things I wanna do here? This is not my favorite landscape I've ever done, but hopefully it teaches you some of the principles of how I'm choosing to do what and in what order and <laughs> all of that kind of stuff and how to pick a good photo because sometimes I'll choose a photo that I think is really really beautiful but it's really hard to paint and that's usually because it's flat um, or and there's not different layers or because there's so much detail and it's hard to narrow it down so for example in this photo there's hundreds of thousands of trees in there but I've done a couple of rows. <laughs> it's easier to simplify. The same thing with the mountains. Um, you don't have to put all the detail to be able to recognize that they're mountains, obviously, and that really is beneficial for, um, especially if you are just starting to paint and you don't know, you don't necessarily know what parts to emphasize and what parts to leave out. It's really important to, um, if you're going for a realistic, like 100% want it to look like a photograph painting, um, this is actually a good candidate for that because you can focus on the different areas. Um, and that's another thing is that if you do something that is just like one big blob, it can be really hard to know what parts to focus on. You have to do it really quickly, otherwise the water dries and gets crazy and um, it's really hard to control. So this is one where I could focus on this area, this area kind of moving down and they didn't have to connect at all, which was actually really, really nice and made it a lot easier. But you can try whatever. I mean, sometimes I choose something that I think is going to be really difficult and ends up being really great and vice versa. So you never really know, but maybe you'll find uh, that you really like uh, beach paintings or forests or I don't know what else. I like roads because it creates a really good distinction point, um, really good depth of field, and it just is really clear and simple, and it feels like a road trip, and everybody loves road trips. Maybe not everybody. I like road trips. It reminds me of all the memories I had on that road trip, and it's just something a little bit different. Uh, that there's movement to it and all sorts of things. So I really like roads. I have a series of roads. <laughs> Paintings. One of my first paintings I ever did was of a road in uh, Vancouver Island, and I love that painting. And I still have it in my on my cork board, board right behind me. Um, but yeah, you can find a subject matter that maybe nobody's really thought to paint before, and you can be the master of it. <laughs> and that's really exciting. Or if you've been somewhere that you haven't seen a lot of paintings of, that could be super interesting. You're representing a place that. You know, you want people to know about um, this in Argentina. I don't know anyone else 
that's been to Argentina and it was kind of a random honeymoon destination but <laughs> but it was super fun and really really beautiful as you can see and I will always have this memory in painting form so okay I'm feeling pretty good about that got some good shadows some good mid-tones some good hot and cold colors um, foreground mid-ground background all that jazz um, I'm pretty happy with it and I'm a little bummed about how muddled these trees got in the middle here but that's okay um, it's not a big deal and I can always let that dry and go back over it sometimes I like to let stuff dry and then sit and just um, see how I feel about it for a little bit and then sometimes I'll go back and edit things um, but yeah so that's basically where I'm going to leave it for now. Go over that now. That's dry. Okay, I'm done. I promise I'm done. <laughs> so hopefully you learned some helpful things in there that you can use uh, to create your own landscape paintings. I would love to see what you create. So if you use this tutorial as an inspiration, um, post what you paint on Instagram and tag me at Ashley Chase Creates. And I would love to see um, what you end up doing. And thank you for watching.